This is the Spirit and Wellness Show. News and information from a higher perspective. With your host, Harry Wilkinson. Yes, hello, and welcome to the Spirit and Wellness Show. I am your host, Harry Wilkinson, and this is the show where we take a look at the days and weeks events, happenings in the world, uh, politics, science, technology, everything that we interact with uh, throughout the week. And we take a look at it from a different perspective, from a higher perspective. We step away from the drama, if you will, and we go inside to help us to have a better understanding of what we're creating in the world and why we may be creating it. It seems chaotic at times, sometimes. Uh, And if you are coming at it from uh, a perspective of things happening to your world, then yes, it can be quite quite difficult to... uh, to uh, really uh, step away from the drama, but you can. And you can by understanding that we are, on a higher level, creating everything. And the world around us is like um, a a virtual reality uh, experience. None of it is truth with a capital T. None of it is real with a capital R. But we make it feel real. And we do this so that we can have experiences, so that we can feel certain things, and that we can ultimately overcome those things and remember who and what we are, remember our oneness. So... Taking that step back helps us to remind us about that, uh, about that oneness and helps us to remember that as desperate as things might seem, as scary as things might seem, uh, as overwhelming as things might seem, they really aren't. You are in control and you can go within these experiences, take energy from them, the energy that was used to create them, and expand. And in this expansion, uh, you overcome, basically. I'm using that word a lot, overcome, because uh, I believe that um, that is what Christians mean, I mean, and, and I don't, I don't mean, uh, I don't mean, uh, you know, a particular type of Christians. But uh, what I mean is the belief system uh, upon which Christianity is based um, is about overcoming the story of Jesus, which is. You know, in, in the spotlight now, this being uh, Palm Sunday and all, the story of Jesus is a story of overcoming. And really, the ultimate overcoming, the overcoming of what appears to be death. And uh, the revival, <laughs> if you will. Um, Jesus' story is very much in line with uh, traditional stories that go back to um, indigenous beliefs. There's always a a sun god, 
or a sun king uh, that dies and is reborn in the spring. Uh, it's tied to, it's really tied to nature. It's tied to the, the winter and the sort of death that occurs in the winter and spring when there's renewal and things start to grow again. Uh, and almost all uh, traditions and all cultures have uh, at least one uh, kind of sun god that uh, dies to him and her, him or herself and then is reborn. So uh, the story of Jesus ties into that, but then it's taken a step further to mean more than just, you know, the death of, uh, uh, you know, the earth and rebirth of, of, of earth in the springtime. It's taken to mean uh, rebirth of consciousness, awareness. So, <coughs> This whole story of Palm Sunday and Easter has to do with this sort of, uh, and the story of the resurrection, has to do with transformation, overcoming, uh, and uh, enlightenment, enlightenment in, in many ways. So it's, it's fascinating how uh, the, st the story uh, makes use of traditions of, of many, many different, uh, uh, well, people sometimes call them pagan groups, they're really indig indigenous um, uh, practices and beliefs, and then gives it that extra, or that something different. So it's fascinating. Uh, and it's uh, certainly something that can be inspiring. Uh, You know, I, 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 whether or not you're a Christian or not, I, I think the story itself uh, can be inspiring. You can be inspired by stories uh, and not particularly believe that they're true, you know. Um, that happens all the time when you read a, an inspiring uh, novel or a movie that touches you in a way um, that you connect to. I mean, that's the way I look at uh, at all of the um, stories e in sacred texts. That's what they do. Um, you're not even supposed to think about, or, uh, you know, it, it, it's not even, it's not even important whether they are the literal truth. Um, and when I say that, I'm talking about truth with a lowercase t, by the way. Uh, it, it's it's not really it's not even important. I mean, stories are th are there to touch on higher truths, if you will. And since everything we're doing and creating in the world is really telling a story about ourselves, um, you know, we can focus on uh, a kind of empirical point of view that you know, adds things up and says this is, this actually happened and this didn't actually happen, but when you get into it, when you think about it, when you take that step back, uh, and when you even <coughs> take into account what uh, the model of uh, our world is becoming thanks to what we know through quantum physics, uh, you see <coughs> that reality uh, is not as cut and dried as it might seem. <coughs> uh, so what am I saying? What am I saying? Am I saying that uh, uh, truth doesn't exist? I, well, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that. Uh, 
there are levels of truth depending on what your focus is. And I think I talk about this in relationship to um, uh, a lot of the things that are going on in politics with um, the uh, uh, our current president and his spokesperson, Kellyanne Conway, talking about things like alternative facts. <laughs> uh, you know, we had, a, I think, a discussion about that a couple of weeks ago on the show. Uh, so it's um, it, it's interesting that that kind of uh, idea is very much coming to the coming forward um, in our world right now. Uh, that this is a question we're asking ourselves: <coughs> Does truth matter anymore? Is there truth? And um, do people who just make things up, uh, do they have any kind of credibility at all? Those kinds of things are questions we're asking. <clears throat> that seems to be, I think, the story that we're telling about ourselves right now, which I find fascinating. <clears throat> maybe get into that another time um, because I want to continue with the talk about mysticism and particularly mysticism as it um, involves uh, <coughs> the work of, uh, of Jesus, Jesus Christ. And uh, there are many people who consider Jesus to have been a mystic. And there are others who you know, are more more traditionally uh, in line with uh, traditional uh, beliefs about Jesus, uh, that he was a martyr and so forth and so on, and that he, uh, you know, uh, came back from the dead and so forth. So, uh, from the one perspective, Jesus is a, <coughs> a leader, spiritual leader. And from another perspective, he is a, a guide, uh, a master, a mystic that shows us the way. Uh, one of the <coughs> one of the quotes from the from the New Testament that is often used to you know, support this idea of Jesus being a mystic is his statement that the kingdom is within you. Uh, that um, idea speaks to mysticism because it's an idea that salvation is not something that you seek or that someone can give you, but it's something that's within you. That's the kingdom of God that they're talking about there. Um, you know, mysticism is basically an idea that uh, raising our state of consciousness to have a direct understanding and knowledge, maybe not even understanding, but direct knowledge of that which is beyond us, if you will, whatever you want to call it. That's kind of what mysticism is. Uh, I'm going to find a, a, a good definition. Uh, now here's one. Mysticism uh, is a belief and a practice that concerns the uh, preparation for and the consciousness of and the effect of a direct and transformative presence of God. So it's about, and some mystics speak of, of union with 